Hey guys, in this video I want to continue calculating my Euler's function for different numbers n and my goal is to write phi of n as some formula. But how math works? Before I'm going to write general formula for n, I want to take a simpler version. So I want to choose some n for which phi is going to be calculated pretty easily. And one of the most clearest example, let's take prime numbers. So let's first give definition of prime number. So we get saying that natural number p is prime number if the only divisors of p are 1 and p itself. So basically we're saying p is a prime if the only divisors 1 and p itself. And what we want to do, we want to calculate the, what is our phi of p. And how are we going to calculate phi of p? Uh, let's just write the seek our uh, interval. So we want to answer how many numbers between 1 and p have GCD uh, with p equals to 1. Uh, for any number, if you're going to calculate the OS function for any number, if you're going to plug in number itself, you can see your GCD is not going to be equal to 1. It's going to be equal to P. So in this case, P doesn't work right away. If you're going to plug in number 1, the GCD of 1 and any number is always equal to 1. Why? Because the divisors of 1 have only one divisor, 1 itself. So 1 works. But what about these numbers? between 2, 3, up to p minus 1. And here you're going to use the definition of prime number. So you know the only divisors of prime number are 1 and itself p. So there is no any of this number that doesn't divide p. So the only sharing divisors with p is going to be equal to 1. So for any number x uh, belong, that x belongs that x equals to 2, 3, up to p minus 1, your GCD of uh, x and p must be equal to 1. And why is this true? Uh, so first let's say we know this all numbers are going to have GCD with p equals to 1. So our answer that Euler's function phi of p, we're going to have p minus 1. So we're saying that our Euler's function uh, equal f of p equal to p minus 1 when p is prime. So this is true for any number. But let's show that this is actually the case. Uh, okay, so how are we going to do this? We're going to prove this by contradiction. Assume uh, that x equals to p minus 1. Yes? And we want to show the GCD f of p equals to 1. So let's prove by contradiction. Assume that GCD of x and p uh, equals to k. And k is bigger than 1. But uh, by unique prime factorization, we can uh, say that this k uh, equal to product of some primes. Let's say uh, q1 up to qk. So we can split our k into product of prime numbers. And then from this and from that k can be split in prime, we can say the GCD of x and p uh, bigger or equal than some, for example, let's choose q1. Yeah. And what we know about q1, so q1 is bigger than 1. Why? Because uh, the definition of prime numbers uh, prime numbers uh, must be bigger or equal than 2. So 1 is not a prime number. But from definition of GCD, it means Q1 divides P and Q1 divides X. Q1 divides P and Q1 divides X. And we found, and what else can I say? Uh, that um, QI doesn't equal to p for any i. And why this is true? Because are we choosing our x 
strictly as in p. So we cannot have that one the prime factor going to be equals to p because in this case x is going to be bigger than p. So and we got contradiction. Why? Because we found some prime number that bigger than one and then divides p. But p has only two divisors, one and itself. And this prime number is not one. And this prime number doesn't equal to p. And it divides p, so it's contradiction. So if we got contradiction, it means our assumption uh, this one is false. So this assumption must be true. So GCD of x and p equals to 1 when x between 2 and p minus 1 equal to 1. Thank you.